Blahy Bawn is situated in a small village in County Derry called Blahy. It is said to be the oldest haunted house in Northern Ireland. Blahy Bawn came to my attention in 2017 while watching an episode of Northern Ireland's Greatest Haunts, one of my favourite all-time paranormal TV shows. Investigator Andy Matthews has. I try and get to the bottom of the truth. And he's not the only one. I've gone all through my life, from a very young age, being aware of spirit. Something's down there. It's really a quest to find out the truth behind what happens to us whenever we pass over. An ancient settlement dating back to the 1600s. Some say the spirits of its past still reside here. I can't hear you. I hadn't actually ever seen anything until I started working in the barn. Oh, he doesn't like me up here. Get out, he's saying to me, get out. Something's There we go. They believe. The question is, do you? Can you knock twice for me? No. The caretaker had never actually seen the show, but was, was aware of um, activity in the wee house. I really, really try to get somebody to talk to me, and I haven't as yet had anyone that will come forward and say, yeah, I know the place, I'll take you around, Marion, I'll tell you what's going on. In its day, the former nursery at the wee house was used not only by children, but also by the staff who cared for them. For them. I've got a soldier here. He's asking me what I want. I'm saying I don't want anything, I'm just having a look. He's an angry little man, full of his own importance. What is it about this place? Nobody wants to speak to me. Oh, he doesn't like me up here. He really doesn't like Get out, he's saying to me. Get out. I'm, I'm not supposed to be up here. At all. So I'm going. He said to me, don't you go upstairs. Don't go up there. And I thought, to hell with it. I'm going up there. We're having trouble in this place. OK, then. Let's go upstairs. <laughs> Folks, <laughs> we... Oh, no problem at all. Where? Are you serious? That's where she's supposed to be. Jeannie Mack. Do you mind if I hop up? Just so quick, look at the, don't, don't stand up there because the floorboards are bad. Oh, that's grand. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Wow. Please excuse my bad filming. I was trying to not have that lady on camera who asked not to be on camera. So I thought it was best to sort of film the ground and um, at the time I wasn't that very good at filming anyway. But uh, we got in, we got into the wee house. We are in the wee house in Blyborn. I just met somebody there who uh, let us, let me have a look around. warm in here, isn't it? Mm, it's the heating on. Aye. Uh, Too cold otherwise. But, uh, what do you think? Did you get any feeling? Not really, just that it was very warm. Yeah. You wouldn't get any anything uh, malicious in here anyway, I don't think. I don't get a bad feeling. You know? No. Um, I was in there earlier, that's picked me out a bit more. Eh? Uh? In, in the other building? Yeah. And uh, around the tower area and yeah. stuff like that, um, I got lovely, a lovely. Um, have you been in the tower and all yet? I haven't, no. Oh, have you not? No. I can show you there. Well, that'll be great, thank you. <laughs> right at that moment, when that lady says that she will show me around the main building, 
I felt like a child on Christmas morning. It was it was just it was just brilliant. I was going to get to see the tower room and see that round carpet, iconic in the in the TV show. She asked me, did I feel anything up there? I had nothing to compare it with, but being in the main building, the atmosphere in the in the main building was a lot different. It was a lot. Calm, calmer. I was actually. There was kind of a. It felt a, a, a very, very peaceful place in the main building in comparison to the wee house, if you can get my drift. And there would have been lots of books, papers, strange. Yet it's been lived in. There's a family feeling here. I got a small boy, seven, eight years old. Um, he seems to be hiding here, hiding up here. The little boy keeps coming closer and then going back. He's, he's so unsure of himself, so afraid. Did you live here? Bloody place, nobody's speaking. Two of the incidents that happened in the wee house was a, a piece of furniture was put up against the door, which they couldn't get in, and that little house only had one door, and they are, they've come in and uh, found uh, dust all over the uh, all over the place. For no apparent reason, but uh, here's here it is from the horse's mouth. The office where Ivan Minnis used to work has been deserted for two years now. Uh, I'd be the education officer based here at the moment. It's in what's known as the Wee House, a former 19th-century nursery with a reputation that's far from innocent. A few strange incidents have happened in here over the years. Uh, one occupant said they come in one morning to find everything covered in dust and no clear evidence of where it would have come from. Another described uh, how they couldn't get into the room. There was The door wouldn't open. A chair had been jammed against the door from the other side. Jammed against the door? Well, uh, sort of got the door shut and it had been sort of jammed up. Jammed up against the door and they had to kind of edge in, moving the chair back and back. And again, the same occupant of the office at the time described how papers were rearranged, she'd left out a set of papers ready for a presentation and found them all scattered the following morning and no windows open, nothing like that to explain that. Sounds like poltergeist activity. The feeling of being there after seeing the TV programme was just amazing, really, really amazing and the fact that I got in to have a look around was, was absolutely brilliant. But let's get into some history, folks. Balahi Bon, a former 17th century manor under state care for the last two decades, is one of the 12 original Ulster Plantation settlements. It comes from two Irish words, bow meaning cow and dun uh, meaning fort. And basically it functioned as a fortified courtyard. Somewhere you could retreat in times of warfare. With many of its original features still intact, the building is steeped in history. Some say the ghosts of Balahi's past still resonate in the walls. Andy is inclined to believe them. It's a bit like a jigsaw puzzle, this place. It's loads of different buildings just added on. And with all the renovation work that's been going on over the years, you know, I wouldn't really be that surprised if it's disturbed certain energies within the building. So, yeah, we could be in for an interesting time here. Like a hospital of some kind. Although, strictly speaking, it was never a hospital, medical operations were carried out at the Bonn by one Dr. Thompson, who lived here with his family in the early part of the 20th century. Dr. Thompson was a great man locally, saved many lives, and there are many anecdotes told about his doctoring skills and uh, his eccentricity at times when surgery was needed. The operations were carried out in one of the front rooms of the castle, but to supply light, 
uh, the surgeon's car uh, and the doctor's car, it's the only two cars in the locality, uh, were, were parked right up against the window and the lights left on. I'm a little bit sceptical of psychics. And Marion, when she got on to the uh, location, she had smelt uh, burning. When I got on to the location, I actually smelled burning as well, for some reason. It's like the smell of burning wood. And I looked around and no chimney smoke or anything like that. I don't know what to tell you there. You know, there was a smell of burnt wood around the outside of the building. I don't know what that was all about. Marion Goodfellow, the last member of the team, has arrived and already she's getting a sense of Balahi's past. Oh, strange place. Really, really strange place. I can smell smoke, S flames, the stench of smoke and burning. Whether there was a catastrophe here or somewhere close by I don't know to this day I will never ex be able to explain that because I actually stood in that same spot myself the smell of burning wood and yet her immediate sensation of fire and panic points to one very significant event that happened here in 1641 courtesy of rebel commander Sir Philem O'Neill when the rebellion broke out, the rebels came here. Apparently, there was about uh, 200 horsemen uh, and soldiers surrounded the castle. And uh, a few days later, the rebels burnt the town and burnt the castle, and the poor settlers had to had to flee. Uh, most of them, I think, survived, but they lost everything. There's been a couple of um, experiences by a resident and staff. And we're going to go into those now. What's it been used for? Has it always been a family home? Or? No. I 300 years ago, the house where the Sturt family now live was a red coat barracks attached to the bond. Poltergeist activity has never been reported here, but according to Cara, another equally strange presence has visited. Okay, well, the house was renovated in 1997, and um, we'd moved back in a few weeks. Um, I came in one one night and I was washing my face when I saw the solid. Well, it was more solid than a shadow side profile of a man moving in that direction. Okay, um, but a few seconds later, the profile, it, it the, the shadow, <laughs> it, did, it did come back, and I saw the other side of the profile moving in this direction. And this wasn't frosted glass, was it? This is no, it can't be plain. because it's a listed building. All oh, right. Yeah, so we can't have frosted glass. So it would have been a distorted image. This would have been something you could no, have seen clearly. No, this is something that I saw clearly. Um, I actually thought it was my brother. So when I saw it, I wrapped the window and I shouted, Frankie, I'll, yeah. I'll let you in now. And there was no answer. And it was then I realised that what I saw wasn't human. <laughs> and did you come out and investigate? Had anybody come no, out and take a look? I did not. <laughs> <laughs> Not in your life would I come out at that time in the night to investigate, so, no. No! 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 Hell no! 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 I refuse- No! Cara Stewart has lived beside the Bawn all her life. She's not the only member of her family to have sensed something unusual here. We're doing a spring clean of the Bawn um, for an event that was taking place later in the week. My sister was in the round tower room. She just heard little court shoes coming behind her on the, the wooden floor. Um, she actually just uh, lifted her bits and bobs and <laughs> flew down the stairs. So it's definitely, you feel as though it's a woman, obviously, because of the shoes? Because that, that of the heard. shoes, yeah. Wow. Deep down, I'm a bit of a scaredy cat, but I hadn't actually ever seen anything until I started working in the bond. And I definitely believe that there's a presence in the bond. The tower room had this circular carpet with a kind of a star pattern in it. Very iconic and it stood out in the TV programme. And um, I was very excited to get up into that room. 
In order to coax a response from the ghostly youngsters he believes are reluctant to speak directly to the team, Andy opts for a different approach. Poltergeist activity, usually associated with children, is said to involve the unexplained movement of solid objects. Perhaps this is the key to communicating with them. Right, what I'm going to try here is a controlled object experiment. Now, the best way to do um, a controlled object test is to get some kind of object that matches the era or the past history of the building. What I've got here is a blacky bottle. I don't know what was in it. Long since drunk, anyway. So what I'm going to do, I'll place that there. Now, the theory of this is that if this room is their safe haven, if you place a foreign object within that haven, and the possibility is if they don't like it, they'll move it. But first I need to check that the ground... No vibration will make it move. I need to mark it. At this stage, I was not a paranormal investigator, but I did have a habit of going through my audio piece by piece, and um, I thought possibly I picked something up here. It's not very audible, but it did sound a bit like a male voice. So uh, here's me going into the tower room itself. Yeah, it's just the uh, reception area mm -hmm. of the main building and an exhibition hall. Oh, this is um, the history and stuff like that, is it? Mm -hmm. wanted to see and I remember that carpet. And the carpet yeah. Wow. Yeah. Gee, I remember Andy Matthews was in here mm. uh, with his dousing rods. Was he? Oh. Apparently there's there's everything in here is kind of a good energy. Yeah, is it? Yeah. Yeah. Hello. Apparently there was a lot of children here. Oh, great. Okay. You know? Yeah. Gee, this is uh I'll just, I'll just quickly fill them around and then I'll, uh... If you haven't seen the original video, uh, Northern Ireland's Greatest Haunts, this is a great opportunity for this girl, to, this, this lady, to let me in here. I always wanted to be in this room. And this room is supposed to be haunted as well by a lady and some children. And yet to be haunted as well by a lady and some children. And yet I never got to the bottom of what that sound was, but you know, interesting all the same. But way back then, I was just starting YouTube. Uh, I had a second-hand camera, bought an electrical store, and I had no editing software. So if I was doing a video, I would have to turn on the camera and leave it on. Because if I turn it off, it would split into more than one file. And then it would be part one and part two. I wasn't able to even join them together. So I had to do everything in 20 minutes file sizes anything over 20 minutes I would have split into two files so when I was there I turned the camera on went through the place in 20 minutes there's your video that was it at the time if I get an opportunity again to go um, I'll do a proper video on it um, really really uh, enjoyed that location um, I didn't cover 
the investigation on Northern Ireland's greatest haunts. Go and watch. Go watch. You know, um, even type in Northern Ireland's greatest haunts. You'll get all the locations they went to in Northern Ireland. And I've been to some of them. I've been to the grounds of Prehen House. Um, that was... Um, that that episode was pretty good. Um, the Cooning Ghost House. I didn't hear, didn't know anything about the Cooning Ghost House until I actually uh, seen that program, and I've been to the Cooning Ghost House twice. Do you know? So um, I got to tr three or four. Oh, I got to four locations. I got to the grounds of Limavady Workhouse, um, but. We were supposed to go this year on an official investigation and because of what's happened, uh, the world health crisis, um, that has put a, uh, a bit of a dampener on that one. But hopefully next year, but we'll get and do an investigation at the Limavady Workhouse at some stage. But I didn't cover any of the investigation of that because I want you to go watch, you know. Uh, very down to earth, old school investigations, no jump scares, no demons, no reenactments, just plain old investigating. And if they don't get anything, they'll tell you. And this particular case, they got a few EVPs. You know, uh, they got a few EVPs in that and done a little bit more research, found a little bit more history and stuff like that. So, you know. I'll leave a link in the description and at the end of the video. But I'm going to leave it for now, folks. I'll see you in another video.